Hi, and welcome back to this, your Urban Church Planter YouTube channel. We are so happy that you're here. If it's Christmas at this time that you're watching this vi video, Merry Christmas to you. Um, we are going to give you a gift. We're going to share with you four principles when it comes to selecting key core leaders for your church planter. So well, within all the principles that we have been sharing, this is the third one. And within, within this third church planting principle, we're going to share four guiding principles on how to select, how to recruit key core leaders to your church planting team. Recruiting your core team leaders is a crucial aspect of your church planting process. This is so important because within your leaders, you're going to be able to create the DNA of the team. So it's super important that you pray about it and that you look for four specific things in those key leaders. Number one, we want to have people of character. By people of character, we mean that people that are Christian, people that say what they mean, mean what they say. You don't have to convince them to be Christian. They are Christian already. They're people that with integrity. It's super important because you're going to lay down the foundation of what that DNA of the church is going to be like. So you need people, number one, people that are a good, solid character. Number two, this is sometimes underrated, but it's so important. You need people that you have good chemistry with. Why is this so important? Because you're going to spend time with people. You're going to go through hard things. You're going to have discussions. You may have even arguments. You may not agree at times. So it's important that you have good chemistry with this people. You're going to spend a lot of time with them. So you at least you have to like each other. So super important. Number two, you need people that you have good chemistry with. Number three, we want people that are competent. We want people that want to strive for excellence, that they want to do things very, very well done, because that's also going to create that sense of excellence, striving as how are we could, could we do this better? How can we give the Lord the very, very best? So it's important that when you have people on your team, they have a sense of competence. Number four, and not because it's the last, is the least important, but this is, this is so crucial. So we want people with a sense of calling. So they all start with C, it's easy to remember, character, chemistry, competence, and calling. We want people that they feel called, that when you share the vision with them, that's something that energizes them, that, that excites them, something that they want to invest their life in. So people that feel called to that part of the neighborhood, they feel called to reach the lost, they feel called to invest their time, their treasure, their talents to this specific church that God has called you to plant. So these four th things are super, super important, very, very important. If you're going to compromise with one of them, uh, maybe the, the one that I would compromise maybe would be with competence. And here's why. Because you can always teach someone to do something better. But you cannot teach character. You cannot teach chemistry. You cannot teach calling. But you can teach someone else to learn something and to do it with a level of excellence. If you have to compromise, we compromise with that, but not with the rest because this is very, very important. So one of the things that you want to do is when you recruit people, this is going to be very helpful. When you recruit people, recruit them into a church purpose rather than into a church ministry. Um, when you recruit people into a church purpose, people are going to be energized. They're going to get, be passionate about it. They're going to develop ideas that maybe you had never even thought about because they are called to that specific purpose. So here are the five purposes of the church. Evangelism. You, there are people that are naturally drawn to tell others the story about Jesus, how Jesus transformed their lives and how he could do the same thing about. Them. Number two, fellowship. 
There are people that naturally make friends. They're like the glue of the team and, and make meaningful relationships. So you recruit people into that, into that, that purpose. People here, I, I, I want you to, to be the glue of the team. I want you to help facilitate and create relationships and connections with people. Number three, discipleship. So it's very important. There are people that are naturally drawn to teach people and to walk with people through the different stages of our spiritual journey. They're safe people. They're people that want to teach, that are patient, that want to invest in other people's lives. So recruit them into that purpose, into discipleship. Ministry and service. There are people that are drawn just to serve and to give. They immediately can spot a need and find ways to meet that need wherever it may be. So we want to recruit people into a ministry or service. And number five, we want to recruit people into worship, the purpose of worship. There are people that are just naturally, they facilitate in atmospheres, environments where we could worship. At times, there are people that are very uh, upfront, so like worship leaders that they like to st- uh, be upfront and they like to, to facilitate worship and they, they help people to connect in that way. And there's some people that facilitate worship, but they're more like in the backgrounds. They just want to eliminate obstacles to help others engage in worship as, as well. So rather than recruiting people to a specific um, ministry or to a specific thing that they have to do, recruit them into a purpose and let them decide and see where is how that purpose can reflect in the ministry of, of the church that you're going to plant. Lastly, when you're recruiting the leaders, you want to set the bar high. I know the temptation is to set the bar low and make it easy, wanting the leaders just to come in because you need the people, you need the help, but resist that temptation. It's going to pay off in the long run. What you want to do is you want to set the bar high, very, very high. (laughs) And here's why. Here's why. When, When something is difficult, when something's going to make an impact in the life of other people, more often than not, high capacity leaders say, hey, you know what? I'm in. If they're people of character, chemistry, calling, competence, and you're calling them into into a vision that's greater than them, you want to set the bar high. Let them know from the get-go that this is something really, really hard. No one has time for church planting. No one has time. You have to make time. So we have to set the bar high. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience, what I did with some of the leaders as, as I recruited them. So when I had a list of people that had those four characteristics, what I did, I met with them and I asked them to do three things. Number one, if you're going to be part of this church planting core team, you're going to have to be personally involved in bringing one person to Jesus. You're going to have to take that time, make that time commitment, and and be invested in bringing one someone, one person to Jesus. That you can pray for them, be involved in their life, take care what what some of their needs and making sure you're there for them. That has to be part, you have to be willing to be make that part of your life. Um, number two, something that I ask them is like, if you're going to be part of this church planting team, I'm going to ask you meeting with me and the rest of the group for a, a weekly meeting for the next year in which we're going to plan together. We're going to get to know each other a lot better. We're going to go out through the strategy. Uh, we're going to grow as leaders but it has to be a time commitment to on, on a weekly basis to meet, make that space, that time in your life and be invested in that. And number three, I asked them, and this is, it was a big ask. I asked them to take a week from their vacation and go with me cross country to a church planting conference. In this case, it was exponential and to sit with other leaders there. And guess what? They were going to pay for it. So that's a big ask. That's setting the bar like really, really high. But when we went down to Florida and we went there to the to the church planting conference, we I remember entering in that house that where we that we rented and getting into my room and then closing the door behind me and thinking, Lord, you better show up because they actually came. They came, they set the time, they they went to the training, they they invested in someone else, 
and and God and God did some wonderful things because um, because they were able to invest and engage once the bar was really, really high. So when something is difficult, when something is gonna make an impact, it's gonna take some time. If it's easy, someone else can do it. But if it's gonna make an impact, this is difficult, if it's, it's gonna challenge me, then you know, then most likely than not, highly capacity, high capacity leaders will engage and will accept. Well, we hope this has been very helpful. That gives you a good idea of how to recruit people and how to recruit leaders that, that you want alongside of your team. If you like this video, uh, make sure to hit the like button, to subscribe, and to share with someone else that maybe be there in that journey of recruiting people for their team. If this is Christmas at the time that you're watching this video, Merry Christmas. I hope you have a really good one. See you in the next one.